All right, just about eight minutes left before the bell, and the Dow and NASDAQ are still near their highs of the day. We'll come back with the closing countdown. And in today's closing bell poll with GM set to eliminate most incentives on vehicles, we want to know what you think. When you buy a car, which do you prefer? A set price or to haggle? Go to our website, cbc.com on MSN. Cast your vote. We'll bring the results soon. All right, stocks are sitting near their highs of the day across the board. Let's uh, get into the closing countdown. We join now Keith All Banks. Right, he is president and chief investment uh, officer at Columbia Management, the asset management arm of Bank of America. And Bob Pisani is the New York Stock Exchange, along with Mary Thompson at the NASDAQ, to uh, wind up this day's trading. And, Keith, I'll start with you. It's a pretty good day by NASDAQ, making four-year highs. As you've been pointing out all day, we've had a big run in commodity-related stocks, not to mention the underlying commodities themselves. That's been the talk on the street today, hasn't it? Yeah, and, uh, and it's again, it's... Oil is always sort of the, the, the main topic here, but if you look at natural gas, we're at a new high for the year, and that was a big factor in why the utilities were running up. Uh, our copper was uh, at a multi-decade high. Coal uh, was doing strong. All the coal stocks were up. Arch Coal's at a new high. And, of course, we had some comments from some of the building materials companies that even the cement business was at record shipments, and the wallboard business was at record shipments. Let me just take the other side of that higher energy cost argument. We've seen how it's hurt DuPont. We saw today Cooper Tire War about higher raw material. Conductor index, though, at a 52-week high. Technology looking reasonably good. The Nasdaq at another four-year high. What's the talk over there? Talk was about the semiconductor index. Some traders telling me they wanted to see it close above that 480 level, and that's exactly what we are seeing. Something else that they've been noting is that uh, volume actually today was, is decent here at the Nasdaq, 1.7 billion shares. So, you know, you were talking about it earlier on street signs, Ron, that whether or not there's conviction behind this rally, and that is certainly what we are seeing today. So when you have gains like the ones that we are seeing today in the semiconductor index combined with decent breath and good volume, all in all, it spells a, a very positive day for the Nasdaq. Composite. Now, if I could, I'd go to Maria Bartiromo right now because she's been laughing so hard she's crying for some unknown reason, but we'll do that at 4 o'clock. Instead, <laughs> let me go back to, to Keith Banks right now. And Keith, you know, we saw the Russell 2000 at another new all-time high. Small caps continue. Let me give you the final word here. Okay, well, the big caps were leaders today on the NASDAQ. That's how I'll finish it. Microsoft, Cisco, Sun, Intel, and Oracle, as well as eBay, um, among the biggest. They are the most active and big gainers on the NASDAQ, so certainly it's helping the NASDAQ reach new four-year highs. Ron? Uh, thanks to everybody, including Keith Banks, President and Chief Investment Officer of Columbia Management. Thanks to Bob Pisani and Mary Thompson as we see the dual closing bells here at both the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. The Dow picking up 58, the NASDAQ 21, the S&P also at a new four-year high. The closing bell continues now with Maria Bartiromo. From the world leader in business news, this is The Closing Bell, live at CNBC's global headquarters, Maria Bartiromo. And good afternoon. The summer rally rolls on on Wall Street. The Nasdaq and the S&P 500 closing at new four-year highs. Our market coverage and the outlook just moments away. Also today on The Bell, the pharmaceutical industry has just released new guidelines for prescription drug advertising. We'll tell you why critics are already saying those guidelines don't go far enough. And we'll explore possible negative side effects of any cutbacks on ads. Double-digit sales gains for Detroit's Big Three last month. We'll tell you what's driving sales. And then... I'm Rob Reynolds. Is haggling and horse trading at the car dealers going the way of the horse and buggy? That's really coming up today on The Closing Bell. But first up, new highs on Wall Street as July's rally stays alive here in early August. The Nasdaq Composite at a new four-year closing high tonight at 4 o'clock on the East Coast. Take a look. Up 22 and two-thirds points on the Nasdaq today. 22.18. That closing price is a four-year high. The S&P 500 just over its previous four-year closing high as well. It was up eight and two-thirds points, another four-year high at 12.43. And the small cap Russell 2000 index is at a new all-time high, highest level ever on the Russell, as small has been big on Wall Street. The Dow Industrial is still short of its uh, multi-year high, but a solid gain today with certainly momentum picking up at the end of the session. 60 points higher on the Dow at 10,683. All of this even as oil prices moved higher to the second straight all-time closing high on oil, Crude oil now sits at 61.89 a barrel. 
That is an all-time high up, 32 cents a barrel. Right to our stock market reporters on that note, Bob Pisani is at the New York Stock Exchange. Mary Thompson is at NASDAQ. Bob? Not just the Russell at an all-time high, the S&P mid-caps at an all-time high. The New York Stock Exchange composite index, a, a composite of all the stocks at the NYC, historic high. Even the semiconductor index, the SOX at a 52-week high as well. So we're hitting it. Not only that, we're hitting very good volume here. We're approaching 1.6 billion. Is that a lot? Hey, on a summer day in August, that's very good. Market internals are strong. New highs are expanding. Again, this is a continuation of this rally that we've seen for the last 30 days. Take a look at the markets at the close. What we've got here, though, in particular, is a commodity-based rally. Those were the big movers here. We had new highs for the year and sometimes multi-year highs in copper and oil and in natural gas. And all those commodity stocks related to all of that group, oil and metals and steel stocks, were all moving to the upside. But other companies, and I pointed out throughout the day, were hurt by these higher prices and specifically cited them overall. Take a quick look at some of these commodity stocks. Phelps Dodge and Copper, historic highs. Rio Tinto, one of the big iron ore companies, not a historic high, but doing very well today. Uh, Rio Doce, excuse me. Arch Coal, ACI, also at a historic high overall. Some of the others like Alcan and Nucor and the Steel Group were doing well on top of that. Utilities. Approaching five year highs. Texas Utilities had a big move on the upside today. That's a company very closely tied to natural gas. It's a utility in Texas. There, you're looking at a five year chart. We are right near five year highs on the utilities. Look at some of the companies that were hurt today by higher costs for the raw materials. Tyco was a big loser on the day. They, they cited in part higher steel costs talking about some problems with their earnings. Masco, which is the big building materials company, higher energy costs were hurting them. Cooper Tire talked about higher raw material costs. You see there are some people that are definitely being hurt here. Let's go over to Mary. She's standing by at the NASDAQ. Little hurt here at the NASDAQ Composite, Bob. The index closing at its best level since June of 2001. What drove the markets today? Well, some good economic news, good earnings news, and, of course, strength in semiconductors. The Philadelphia Semiconductor Index closing above the 480 level at its its best levels in 13 months for the semiconductor index. So when you have this group doing well, that tends to lead the Nasdaq higher as well, and that's what happened today. Taking a look at some of the how some of the semiconductor stocks performed today, Intel was among the most active, posting a gain. Also, we saw strength in Altera, Maxim Integrated, really a big winner today. The company reported earnings in line with expectations, gave a positive outlook. In general, people are expecting good things from the semiconductor industry in the second half of the year. That's what's behind the rally. In in this index, and in turn, that's helping to drive the NASDAQ higher. Also, big cap stocks were active and to the upside today, including Microsoft, which closed at its best level since February of this year. And a quick check on some of the NASDAQ movers. Sirius Satellite was a little bit lower, even though it posted a lower than expected loss. Concerns about customer costs. ICI Interactive beating the street, not enough to help it. Research in motion, positive legal news. Macrovision and Adobe. Uh, Macrovision disappointing outlook, and Adobe reiterating an outlook, and that disappointing appointed investors. Maria, back to you. All right, Mary, thank you. Let's bring more voices into the mix. Now I'm joined by CNBC senior economics reporter Steve Leisman, also CNBC's Dylan Radigan with me. General, nice to have you as always.